A clinical commentary by Simon Bermagny, published in the JOSPT, looked at the neuroplasticity of sensory motor changes in low back pain. And they broke up these neuroplastic changes into three different categories. There was a pain category, motor control, and then a somatosensory. The details that they presented for each one of these categories was quite a lot. And so if you actually want the specific details, I recommend that you actually read this clinical commentary. Although I'll give you a heads up, it's very dense. At least I found it to be very dense. Uh, but in general, what they found is that there was changes in each one of these categories in those with low back pain. So for pain, they found that there was a higher cortical response uh, in those with chronic low back pain to noxious stimuli. They found that there was actually uh, blood flow changes to different areas of the brain in those with low back pain. And then they also found that for motor control that some of the um, cortical mapping for some of the larger muscles versus the smaller muscles, there was more overlap uh, in those with low back pain. And the results presented in this commentary really aren't that surprising. We know that there's a lot of changes that go on, especially with chronic pain, but kind of looking at how detailed some of these changes are and also how technology has allowed us to dig deeper into kind of some of the pathophysiology of chronic pain, it's really amazing. And I think this information is really interesting and we need to explore these kind of things to try to figure out the pathophysiology of chronic pain and specifically chronic low back pain. But when I was reading this article, I couldn't help but keep thinking of what do we actually do with this information and how do we apply it clinically? And obviously it's really cool that we have all this technology available to us, that we can look at spinal structures, we can look at blood flow to different areas of the brain when someone's experiencing low back pain, that we can look at the brain and figure out what uh, areas of the brain are responsible for different movement patterns. But when we're actually trying to assess what is the cause of low back pain, even with all this technology, we really don't know because the findings haven't been consistent in those with low back pain. And so it kind of highlights just how complicated this issue really is. We tend to have very simplistic ways of explaining it that uh, it's mechanical low back pain. So it's a strained muscle or a sprained ligament. It's disc related pain. Uh, maybe there's some sort of like structural abnormality driving the pain syndrome or some sort of movement dysfunction. But even with all this technology, we're still not able to establish really what is the cause of low back pain. And this makes it challenging to actually apply this information clinically because one, I don't think we have interventions that are specific enough to actually change um, any of these specifically. So looking at blood uh, flow to different brain regions, motor control, sensory changes, all those kind of things. We have some, but I don't know how effective they are actually changing it, especially when compared to others. Uh, exercise in general is going to have some sort of effect on a lot of these different things. So maybe there's one exercise or one treatment that's better than the other. You know, we just don't know yet. And so to kind of summarize my ramblings here, uh, Chronic low back pain seems to have a lot of changes on the brain, whether it's how the brain actually processes pain, uh, how the brain controls motor function, and then also sensory changes as well. And while all that information is interesting and kind of showcases how complex uh, pain and low back pain can be, it seems that it's difficult to apply because one, those findings aren't consistent, so we actually don't know if those are the reasons behind uh, chronic pain or chronic low back pain, but then also looking at specific interventions, I don't know if we're able to specifically target them uh, to even make a change. So I think a lot of research still needs to be done, and we'll see if this is actually one of the causes of low back pain.